Breaking news! With so many sporting events canceled, they're going to televise the World Origami Championship. It's on pay-per-view! Hooray! <laughs> All righty then! Welcome everyone, it's another Friday night. And check this out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip stuff around here. Shabang! Look at that! Oh, I didn't set it up right. I was racing around trying to set stuff up. And look at that. The fade level's all off. We're going to fix it. Nice. I got myself a fancy thing called a stream deck. So I can just hit all the little keys on the keyboard and keep this baby cooking! That's right. Let's see where everybody's checking in from, how everybody's doing. And then I have a special announcement to make. And I'm going to go... Oh, I'm going to... I'm going to go over the cast for the new Digimon movie and well I'll I'll just tell you I'm I'm going to be doing an online voice acting class so I wanted to gauge people's interest in such a thing I'm going to keep the group small but I'm so excited about them finally giving Digimon Kazuna a release yay that I just decided hey why don't I do like a a Zoom coaching class, a Zoom voiceover class for people that want it. Keep the group small because I'm doing this already for the participants in my voice training course. So why not for voiceover people to sort of celebrate uh, this coming out? It'll be inexpensive. It'll be small. You won't have to go anywhere. And I can give you one-on-one -on -one feedback. So yeah, some people like the idea. I'll get into that a little bit later. But let's see, where, where are you guys coming from? You're from Mississippi. The Gigi. Somebody's in the Gigi. I don't know where that is, but uh, good for you. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's a cool name. Zexun. That sounds like a like a like a villain in in Flash Gordon. <laughs> Zexun, release the Kraken. I tried to show some of that to my kids the other day, the, the old Flash Gordon from the early '80s, and it uh, I, I must say it did not add, it did not age well. A bit slow. Uh, Dame Judi Dench was in that one. It was uh, quite the cast, actually. You know, you can get a lot of good voice references especially for bad guys from these old movies. I remember when I was a young a young voiceover actor in Hollywood, I used to have in my mind movie stars of yesteryear, like 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 George Burns, you know, somebody like that, to be like an old guy, and it would be so sort of out of the mainstream that people wouldn't know who I was doing, or for like a bad guy to do, uh, yeah, Shane, that's, that's from a movie called Little Rico, Shane, it's uh, Edward G. Robinson, yeah. So when people are doing this kind of a thing, and you hear this, yeah, Shane, in a cartoon, what they're really doing is using a vocal reference from a very old movie or a very old actor. Those are the best to use that or people that you know in your daily lives, those two things. Doing impressions, eh, it doesn't really impress the casting directors so much because everybody can do impressions. And also, if you're in Hollywood, they could just hire the actual actor to do that. So, you know what, let me get off of this uh, this background here and shbang, pull that down here in my recording studio. Do you know something? Since this is going to be an all voiceover episode of the Joshua Seth Show, here live on YouTube, that I have been recording pickups for Digimon Kazuna, shabang, right there on that microphone. Oops. With this, these are soundproofing squares behind me. You can get them for like 24 bucks on Amazon. Some people had been asking what those were. And I have a sound blanket like sound dampening blanket over the window tacked up there to my right and I basically just outfitted an extra bedroom in my home as a video and audio production studio and I've been doing keynote speeches around the world I've been doing training for for speakers and for content creators through my class through my online class creating content here, and now I'll be running voice acting classes where you'll be able to get on a mic where you are on your computer, and I'll give you copy, which are scripts, what we call scripts copy, 
with no notice, just like you would get in an audition setting. It would be just like walking into an audition. Okay, here's your piece of animation copy. Here's your piece of commercial copy. And next up on the mic, you got three minutes, you got five minutes, whatever. Read it down. Here's what I'm hearing. Can you give it to me this different way? Just like we would do in Hollywood, but we'll do it over Zoom. I think this is such a cool idea. I literally woke up this morning with this idea because I went to bed last night. Here, I'll show you. I was looking at, see if I can do a screen share. Shabang, it worked! Yay for technology from my stream deck. I'll get to your comments in a moment. But I, I was looking at all of the articles that were coming out about the new Digimon movie now that we have a release date. And Crunchyroll was the first one that I saw where they reported the full cast. And I'm going to sleep with all these thoughts in my mind. And I'm thinking move that around a little and I'm thinking yeah sometimes I miss it <laughs> especially being here in isolation and then I realized wait a second tomorrow literally tomorrow I'm doing a zoom class training the graduates of the last month's online voice training that I did and that's gotten kind of expensive that's a couple hundred bucks to go through that now because again I have to keep the courses small and we had an intro price but that was for the first couple of months now it's like 200 bucks but I thought you know what if I don't do the that online course and I just do just a class just a once a month class I could keep it like really reasonable and I'll, I'll get into that in a moment but and I also want to hear your questions about the class but also about voice acting voice training for voice, specifically for voiceovers, though, for voice acting. Anywho, uh, this is what I saw. They they released the cast. Of course, there's me first. If I click, can you? What happens if I click? Yeah, you can see it. There's me, and Johnny Young Bosch, very talented musician, singer, as well. And I always say one of the best ways to train and prepare your voice, not just for voice acting, but any kind of acting and any kind of speeching, the speeching. That's perfect. Expert. I am the expert. Flavin. Any kind of acting, not just voice acting, and any kind of speaking is through singing because you learn about tempo, you learn about pitch, you learn about variance and putting emotion behind your voice. So many other things as well. Ah, oh, the lovely Tara Sands as Kari. And, oh, Izzy, played by Mona Marshall. And I'm going to get some of these people on this show in weeks to come, on Friday nights to come, I promise you, as we approach the release date for the movie. I would love to get Mona on. She's so sweet, and she was so supportive of me. She was one of the first voice actors that I met in Hollywood. I, th I think she was on the very first animated gig that I ever had. And we could reminisce about that, and she would have a lot to share, I'm sure. And on and on, Colleen O'Shaughnessy, another sweetheart, the very funny Tom Fawn down there, Kirk and Laura, and all the, uh, Jeff Nimoy, whom I already interviewed. Although, although, check this out. Wait a second, we go back. I have a new computer just for you guys. Just, yes, to the new MacBook Pro 16-inch, baby! 16 inches of raw processing power with extra RAM. And extra hard drive space. Yes, I bit the bullet and bought a new, a new MacBook just just to produce this stuff for for everybody. And let me hit back, hit back to this. Okay. Anywho, I want to show you the trailer. Let's see if we could see this trailer here. What? Hey now, I loaded that specifically to show you guys the trailer. Oh, maybe that's not the trick. Yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Well, I'll, I'll pull up the, the Digimon trailer in a moment. That should work. And look at that. That's the voice acting class. The video. You want to see the video of this? I'll show you in a second. Anywho, eventually, once the class is full, it'll be 99 bucks a month. You got to have Zoom, which is free. But Oh, initially, it'll be 49 bucks. The link, by the way, is already there in the description right below the video. Once the first class fills up, then there'll be a waiting list and anybody that drops out that doesn't want to, there aren't contracts or I hate that kind of stuff. No pressure. If you don't have the money or the time or whatever, you can pull the plug after any particular month's 
class and there's, you know, no commitment. But as once it's full at the 49, then it'll jump up to the 99 a month and there'll be a waiting list and anytime anybody drops out, then somebody will get a chance to come in at the $99 rate. But you guys, you get it for 49 and we'll be doing these on a regular, you know, recurring monthly basis. So if you come in at the, at the $49 rate, then it'll stay forever. I, I've been wanting to come up with some sort of a low price way for people to get access to what I'm training without having to you know, spend hundreds of dollars on the full voice training course or thousands of dollars as, as people do to have me for private, private you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching or, or speaking directly to their groups. So 50 bucks, less than 50 bucks, I mean, that's what you would pay for a class anyway. In, in LA, but usually it's like $500 for eight classes or something. That's, that's typically how they go. I try to keep this really, really reasonable. I hope it is. What you need is the, a computer with Wi-Fi. Obviously, you have that. Headphones so that you can hear my, my responses to you without it echoing back and then everybody listening. And an external mic like this. Do you know this mic costs less than $100? Yes, it does. And when you sign up, I give you uh, sort of a gear guide, my recommendations for gear. You don't have to spend a lot of money. I mean, I love the Neumann Studio mic, which goes anywhere from $1,200 to five dollars or $6,000, depending on you know, which one you get. You don't need to spend $1,000 on a mic. You shouldn't use the free wired mic that came with your phone, but you can. That's better than the onboard mic on your computer. You just can't use the one on your computer. You have to use headphones and a real mic and you can get the real mic for less than $100. And some of you will have that already. Let's see. You will have the discounted membership, the half off for life, access to the call recordings for as long as you are a member. They will be there all month. So if you want to review, I know I can talk fast. And I want to get everybody in too. So I'll keep it moving. There won't be any dead air as we, as we say in radio. Uh, and you'll get monthly challenges that we'll be able to review the following month. You'll also be able to get into my private Facebook group, which I'm locking down now to just people that are either on this or have gone through the course. And discounts on private coaching and stuff. So there's all of that. There's stuff that I've done. You guys know who I am. And let's see, let's see if I can actually drop in the video. I think I can, but tell me in the comments in a second if you're able to hear it. Let's go. Let's go to the tape. Where is it? I got some, oh, here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this over on the software and let's see if you can hear it. Go. Hi, I'm Joshua Seth, and thanks for checking out my online voice acting class. I'm excited to share with you everything I've learned over my 20-year career as a Hollywood voice actor in such shows as Digimon, Akira, and SpongeBob SquarePants, not to mention the hundreds of commercials and thousands of promos I've recorded over the years. In this monthly online class, I'll help train your voice and give you expert direction as you read commercial and animation scripts live with me on the mic. You'll learn how to do cold reading, take direction, and improve the quality of your performance so you can book more gigs. You'll join me live on Zoom every month, get coaching and direction from me personally, and learn from the feedback that I give to other students in the class. The calls are recorded, by the way, so if you can't make one, you can always review it later in the member section. And at the end of each class, I'll even give you a challenge for the month designed to give you that extra motivation you need to keep pushing the envelope and developing your voiceover skills for increased bookings. You'll also be able to meet other up-and-coming voice actors like yourself in our private Facebook group. Who knows what opportunities can come out of expanding your network like that? Everyone says it's not what you know, it's who you know, but actually both are important. That's why I bring other voice actors and directors into the community to share what they know as well. As a member of my monthly voiceover class, you'll also get a big discount on private one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. That's worth the price of admission right there. Limited private coaching slots are available each month, but they go to my students first. Right now, you can join my online voiceover class for just 49 bucks a month. It'll go up to 99 a month once the class is full, and there'll be a waiting list to get in at that point, but as long as you continue your monthly membership, you'll get to keep it at that same low rate. I won't raise the price on you later. And as long as you keep your monthly membership active, it'll stay the same rate forever. If you ever want to cancel, just let me know and I'll make it happen. No hassle, no contract.
no problem. I've got to keep the class size small though so everybody will have a chance to get on the mic. So grab it now. You can always cancel later if you change your mind. Thanks, and I look forward to seeing you in my next voiceover class. All right, so this should bring in comments. Now, how can I bring in the comments? This is supposed to show the comments. Bear with me here. Hmm, have I changed the time again? Can you guys see that when I put, have you changed the time again? I'm always changing the time, Mojo. Haven't you figured that out yet? Uh, hmm, comments and reactions. Well, now. Mm-hmm. Comments. Ah, there they are. And there, and there they are. All right, there's the comments. Check out how snazzy this is. It didn't work. Why can't I make it big? Hey, God. Ah, there we go. Okay, I'll move this here. And move that there. Mm. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> this is the first time I'm doing it. I have this whole new system, new new monitor, new computer, everything. Okay, that appears to have worked. Wow, that was confusing. Okay, hello. So let's take a look, see what you guys thought of all that and answer your questions and have some fun. So let's see. Um, yeah, Drek, oh, oh, let me go back a little bit here. Um, hmm, I gotta go to the other screen to go back. Whoa! Whoa, Flavin! Okay, there we go. So thank you for the, the cool vest comment, Drac. That's right, I used to wear this vest all the time when I was doing like college shows, like live shows. I, this was like my go-to. What is this? Uh, let's zoom in on me a little. That's too close. Okay. Here, we're back! <laughs> Woohoo! And we're back! <laughs> I'm feeling silly tonight. Uh, okay. So cool. Okay, so people seem to be like, have I ever heard of Corey, voice of Captain Hook on Peter Pan? I wonder which version that was. It's one of the main villains. No, I don't know that guy. I wonder who that was. I was a fan of Jake and the Neverland Pirates. I don't know if that's the version that you're talking about. Oh, Mishka. Love it. Love it. Cool. See, now, Drac, okay, now I'm I'm calling you out, and don't be embarrassed because you're the one posting this, and nobody knows who the heck you are anyway because you're using a fake name. I mean, I assume you don't walk into Starbucks and say, my name is Drac Aqua, that you have a name. But, like, I saw earlier Drac goes, well, I don't know if I'm going to pursue voiceovers because it's too late in life and costs too much. <laughs> you know, I didn't make it in voiceovers till I was 30. And I, I like I spent years in a performing arts college, a very expensive one, in New York University, and then I moved to Hollywood, and then I spent thousands on classes. And I spent ten thousand dollars putting together ten thousand, that's right, dollars, putting together my first demo tape because back then we couldn't just do it on a laptop because there weren't any. We had to, I had to rent a recording studio and and a sound engineer and have them compile audition copy and it was a very expensive and time consuming process like 50 bucks is nothing so it's no excuse okay if you guys want to do this sort of thing and you want to learn voiceovers this is my solution for you is this class let's see wait wait kate isn't kate Voicing Mimi? Well, I'm just going by what I see on Crunchyroll, and I would sort of trust what they put down. Sometimes they cast and recast these things, too. I know when it came to Digimon Try, the first one, they actually cast somebody else as Ty. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? They cast somebody else as Ty. Because, you know, I'd made a big show out of moving out of L.A. and retiring for voiceovers, and then the fans, you guys, got together and said, Hey, no. We won't go. And then the studio contacted me and, and recast. And I flew out to L.A. And they threw out whatever the original voice actor did for Ty 
on the new Digimon Try movies. And I, to this day, don't know who that is. Yeah, da, da, da. All right, and you're just calling out names of other actors. Wasn't that fun having Jeff? Ne- I gotta have Jeff Nimoy, director of the original Digimon movie and voice of Tentoman, which I originated. And then I was doing too many voices on Digimon, so they started started to farm some of those voices out. One of them was to Jeff, uh, and but a wonderful director and writer and all around good guy. I tried to bring him in to one of these talks to introduce his new movie, Famish. Which, you, which I saw is quite funny. And Lex Lang, another great guy, was in that movie, did a great job. A Z-Bod guy. And, well, not, eh, kind of. And I don't want to give anything away, but <laughs> I, I tried to interview him for this show a month or so ago, and just everything crashed, and I had to bring him in on a phone. And that like that's why I had to get this new laptop. Isn't she sweet? I've got to name her. I'm taking suggestions for names for the new laptop, by the way. Woohoo to the Derek Steven Prids. Yes, yes. Everybody's saying yes, yes, it's on. Yeah, da, da, da. I'm you're too broke to spend on the five free Okay, yes, I do have five free videos. You can get the five free videos on the importance of voice training, what it is, how it will benefit you, not only as a voice actor, but just in your life and your relationships and whatever career you choose, because this is the way we communicate our ideas and our personality to others. Notice when I refer to voice, I do it here, not here. Big problem with American voice actors is they're too stuck in the throat. Ooh, uh, like Spicoli, uh, Mr. Hound, Klaus, you know, they're like that. That, Maybe not the accent, but they're stuck in the throat. And you strain your voice. For a singer, that's really bad. You can get vocal nodes on your vocal cords when they're smashing together with too much air like that. And... We used to be trained in the theater to place the voice down in the chest. So when, well, okay, there's there's your facial mask, then there's the head, and then there's the chest. And so what you really want is to combine the chest voice and the head voice in forward in your facial mask so it has that sort of pro- piercing quality that allows it to project. And it's, and it's strong and it has volume and it can communicate well, and then you can go and place it different ways for commercial work, animation work, voiceover work. That's all the stuff I teach in the course, but I mean, I can just immediately address the tweaks that you would be best to make in your own voice in the class, more direct. All right, so continuing on. What if Ken and the Digimon Emperor are two separate characters? And I'm skipping over that. We're not going to get all in the weeds on Digimon on this right now because it's already almost half past and we're going to keep this short. Just introducing the class to you guys right now. So it sounds cool. Mishkala. More Digimon Emperor stuff. We'll do that on another one when I'm doing an interview with cast member. from. We'll do a Digimon one, okay? But that's not this one. So, yes, yes. Uh, who was I in the SpongeBob movie? Okay, Noah, I played a bunch of roles in the SpongeBob, but the ones that are attributed to me are... I played the voice of the king's crown polisher, who's always getting bumped on the head by Princess Mindy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the prisoner. I was the prisoner in that. All right, uh, let's see. It's kind of... Oh, low volume. What was low volume? The Uh-oh. That whole little movie video thing was low volume? Hmm. Well, too late now. I'll watch it back on the replay, and we get better every week, don't we? We get better every week here. Mojo, yes, I changed the time again. Okay, so now we're caught up. Yeah. Drax, part of the Facebook group. Good, good to know. <laughs> Looney Tunes. Love the Looney Tunes. Uh, that, so that's Warner Brothers, and I used to live... Right, right down the street from Warner Brothers Animation, and for a time, I was the voice of Kids WB. Oh, <laughs> after I, after Fox Kids went the way of the dodo. So, <laughs> did you know the WB stands for Warner Brothers? It does. It does. So, I wonder if I can call these out. No, nope, I can't. Oh yes, I can. Like that. Look at that. Layers upon layers. Okay. Looking clean. Thank you, Dresden. Thank you so very much. I hope you guys do take advantage of this class. Like I said, we'll be doing it monthly. Once it fills up, though, I won't keep it at that discounted intro rate. So the link for the class is in the description below. I'm going to jump off in a few 
here. Yeah, that's right. He did see some of those early YouTube videos, and I was like, why can't I make the microphone work? Just like real basic stuff like that. <laughs> yes, we all, need some, we all need some laughter in these trying times, Misha. These trying to, what are we, month 16 of the quarantine? Feels like that sometimes. And I knew something was calling me up on my laptop. Am I calling you up directly on your laptop? That, that would be weird. Okay, we're back to this Captain Hook thing, which I had no idea what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. What's a good method? Okay, thank you, Zexoon, for a voice acting question. Come, bring it on with the voice acting questions. That's the theme of this one, after all. And hundreds of people watch these things after the fact, and I want them to get value for their time. What's a good method to stay in character? So I recommend a note card method. Now, I used to do this before smartphones and iPhones and flip phones and any kind of phone. Back when we used to talk on the phone on a tin can and a string, I used to do this with index cards. And I still recommend you initially handwrite your characters down on index cards, but then you could certainly make a, a list on your phone I use the Reminders app to create lists, so you could create a character list. I name the character. I name the vocal reference for the character. If it's another movie, an actor, an actress, a character in a book, a neighbor, a friend. So I, I, I name the character, like I have one, oh, Mr. Snubbly, and I put uh, like any vocal quirks that they have, and if, if I imagine that they would wear some sort of clothing, like goggles for tie, or Mr. Snubbly would wear glasses, big glasses like this, and he's always pushing them up on his nose like that, and he's sort of a, a bookish, and that's a vocal reference. So I notate in my, you know, the old style would be the 3 by 5 cards, but I'd write on the 3 by 5 card the name of the character, the voice type, nerdish, nebbishy, booky, things like that. If there's a reference for him, my reference in my mind is the kid in the old Bullwinkle cartoons, Rocky and Bullwinkle cartoons. There was a kid in that, and then there was something about reading a... I, I don't know why I'm going to this one. I haven't. That was just very random, so I may be calling out the reference incorrectly, but it was some sort of character in the old Rocky and Bullwinkle show that I used to remember when doing that voice. And then, and then the, he would always be putting his, his nose up like that. And it's got a little hint of the oh, droopy. Droopy is like Dawes Butler used to tell me to do this. You pull your, your side of your cheek out like this and slow it down. But I speed it up for that. So it's fast, it's droopy, it's glasses sliding off the nose, it's rocking bullwinkle. And then it's good to have like a line or a laugh or something. Oh, that would be it for Mr. Nebley. A Mr. Snibbly, like that, and the sound. And so you, if, if you want, let's say you haven't done this character in a week, a month, a year, and they call you back to do more episodes, I would refer to that and get right back into character. And of course you can go up and down, you can go, and you can make it, you could add a little raspiness to him, make him a different sort of a voice, or you could make him an old Mr. Snubbly, and it would still have that snubbliness to it, but he would have a little Adam Sandler as an old man in it. You can move it around like that. So I think I'm just getting way too far into this, but I hope that is interesting and answers your question about it. And then, of course, you got to... So that was, the, that was the question about methods to stay in a character. You write it down. You write those aspects down. And then you know your voice well enough. These are the things that I teach in that Train Your Voice 30-day class. You know how to play with the various elements, tone, pace, pitch, volume, vocal variance, musicality, variety, these sorts of things, in order to pull and tease all of these characters out of it. Uh, will I help students get into voiceover like Funmation? Well, I wouldn't want to guarantee Funmation specifically. Uh, however, I will look forward to bringing on writers, actors, directors, casting directors, and, and bringing them into the classes to give insight into their process. So to that extent, yes, but I wouldn't guarantee work to anybody. That wouldn't be fair. Uh, it's not in anybody's power to do that. Uh, but I will, give, I will give guidance and advice and a real audition-like 
setting so that you will get used to what it feels like to take a piece of copy that you've never seen before, get direction and go, and then change direction 180 degrees on the next take and the next read, which is what, which is what it's like in a real audition setting. And these auditions are happening online now, by the way. So even to that extent, you can get voiceover work from anywhere when you have just a real basic setup like this. Uh, I've, I've got a mixer and a hundred dollar mic, a hundred dollar mixer and a hundred dollar mic. That's really all it is. Uh, my, my internet costs almost as much every month. Let's see. What's some other questions? Mm-hmm. Moving right along. Oh, thank you, Mojo. I'm the only person that could play Ty. Well, but in point of fact, they can cast anybody they want to play Ty. And sometimes I've been unavailable. So, but I, he's a character near and dear to my heart, so I always do intend to play Ty. Yes, yeah, Sarah Kay. Ty, the leader of the Digimon. Ty is basically... Now, like, for getting into a character, Ty is my voice, but I pitch it just a little bit like that. I put a little more air in, and I pitch it up, up a little bit, except for in Kazuna, I use my voice and I bring it down. Still a little more airy, like this, but I bring it down a little, and it slow it down because he's more contemplative at this stage in his life. So in Kazuna, he's basically going to sound like this. And I did sort of an in-between for Try because of their age, right? All right, back to Drac, Aqua, Gotta Roger. This is so much easier than just pulling out the comments one by one, isn't it? We're going so much faster with this fancy comments on the screen thing. So that would be great. No, I would love to have you in the Zoom class. I feel like I know you already. And Robin Williams, what is this question? Robin Williams reprised the role of the genie. Hmm. Hmm. That's it. Yeah. Well, um, he's dead, so I don't think that's going to happen. And I've seen the live action movie with Will Smith with my kids. I have to say he did really well, especially with the singing. Who knew Will Smith could sing? These are the jokes, folks. All right, here's another question. How come, now stuff's pull, that's this gray, the gray comments on the bottom. I don't know what's going on there. But there's another question here about what have you noticed seems to be a new trait among current working voice actors? A new trait. I don't know that there's a new trait. Well, okay, yes, a certain naturalness. But this is this has been over the course of years that more and more, especially for commercials, commercial work goes to people who can sound natural. Authenticity would be the trait in that. Letting us feel like these are words as you would speak them in your normal conversation. So, you know, this sort of over-articulated, uh, a better example would not be, st I was going to do like stage acting, you know. A better example would be, Old-time commercials would be Ovaltine. It's the Ovaltine hour, and everything would be very over-enunciated like this. That, that's very far in one direction, old-timey voice acting, whereas the new stuff is just like I'm doing with you right now. Energy, casual, authentic. If they feel that you are a real person, then you are more likely to get the bulk of voice acting work these days, especially commercial work. Animation is different. Every show has its own style. You got to really know the style of that studio or of that project in order to match what it is that they're looking for. But for commercial, definitely, it would be authenticity. Noah's done the five free videos. Very good. I'll definitely want everybody to watch those before getting into the class. And you can access those five, five videos in the link in the description below this below this video as well. But good question there. Is it Malik? Malik? Like that? Uh, absolutely, Rob, Robin Williams will be a legend forever because that's pr pretty much the definition of a legend, somebody who stands the test of time. And Renee agrees with that. Okay, let's see if we can get down to the bottom of these comments and finish things up in some other way. Here and what De uh, Desden is saying, amazing! You're amazing as Ty. The dub trailer is Kazuna. That's right. The dub trailer. Let's see if I can finish up with showing you the dub trailer. 
of the new movie that just came out. Although you've probably seen it before, but I would like to comment on it for you guys. Sarah likes this time. Okay, we shall keep it because <laughs> because the other time it was just getting too late for me, and I want to have a Friday night too. So I we probably will keep it. It's 7 p.m. East Coast time in the United States of America, 4 p.m. West Coast Pacific time. On Friday nights, Renee agrees. Kids, the kids WB was your childhood. So, making me feel old. Uh, okay, a personal question. How have I been keeping myself entertained besides the online classes? I'll tell you, morning, noon, and night, sometimes till 2 a.m. in the morning, I've been working on this stuff, learning the software, uh, cr scripting the content. Producing the videos, which are all done now in the class, the, the month-long voice training class, that's why it's up to 200 bucks now. And because it's all done, the guinea pigs in the first couple classes got it for half price. It's just like what I'm going to do with the, with the regular voice acting class. You guys are my guinea pigs. You get it for half price more later on. This is all I'm doing. Also playing with my kids and also playing with my girlfriend. Playing with <laughs> different kind of playing if you know what I mean. But, you know, my personal relationships with my very tight circle in my corona quarantine here, it's basically just them. I'm with the kids half the time, and I'm with the girlfriend half the time. And then the other, other, other times, I'm just working on this. I mean, blinders on, super focused. I'm the guy that wrote the book on focus. You know, I wrote a book, Finding Focus in a Changing World. This is the world that is changing if you don't have my book, you can get it for like 99 cents on Kindle or, I don't know, $12 or $15 or something for the real book on, on Amazon. You definitely should. Uh, it's also like, I don't know what it is, $10 or something on iTunes or Audible, and I'll read it to you for four hours. It's the mindset of how to adapt to change and focus your mind to perform at a higher level. That was the focus of my old keynote speech. It's the focus of my book, and it's very, mm, shall we say, aquapo to what's going on in the world right now. I never plugged this book, but the link for it is down below. All the links to all my stuff are in the description. You should check this out. I spent three months, uh, actually 100 days on the dot, writing that book, and you can get it for 99 cents on Kindle. So, you know, if you do, give me a nice uh, review on Amazon, please. And that's all I ask. I'm not trying to get rich off of any of this kind of stuff. I'm just trying to put my collected wisdom of decades of experience doing this stuff out there for you guys. And keep the lights on. You know, that's all I want. Uh, I'm a, I really am a minimalist. Anybody that knows me personally, like Misha, knows like I have zero interest in driving a fancy car or living in a mansion or owning a boat or any. I really could give a crap about any of that. Like, I just want to secure my children's future and pursue my passion with integrity every day. And I, I'm doing that. And, oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. I have a better answer. Hi, I'm Joshua Seth. And thanks for checking out my... Not that. Oh, my goodness. I got to go back to this because I already screwed up the other screen. Okay. News! The news. Where's the news? I don't have the, the sound of the news. Radio sound. Here's the... Here is the final answer to how have I been occupying myself. Hours a night, and sometimes in the day. Hours and hours a day, I have been spending my time by myself, with my kids, and with my girlfriend, every day. Singing karaoke. Yes, it's true. First, okay, let me tell you the slippery slope that this took. I, I occasionally have done karaoke. I like doing it at cons when I'm a guest at, at, at comic cons and, and anime conventions. I really do enjoy it. But it's a very rare every once in a while thing. I don't seek them out. Then in quarantine... My, my daughter, my now seven-year-old daughter, she likes to sing and dance a lot to songs on the Alexa. Hey, can I make your Alexis go off? Alexa, what is the time? Mine's not called Alexa in this room. 
<laughs> but sorry. So she likes to sing and dance to these songs. And I said, you know, Nikita, on YouTube, they have music videos of these songs. So we started watching music videos. I'm like, and she's memorizing. She's working really hard to memorize the words. And I'm like, Nikita, they have what are called karaoke versions of these songs. And they'll show you the words. So I started doing it with her because she memorized all the words to Frozen and Moana. She's got a great voice. And I'm training her voice as well. She wants to be a singer and an actress when she grows up. And she absolutely can because training your voice is the best training for any kind of acting, as I said at the beginning. And we come full circle. And then, so here's the slippery slope, right? So we started we started singing karaoke songs together. And I'm creating a playlist in YouTube for this. Then I found apps. There's apps on your phone for karaoke. So I tried different apps. Some of them, really, they're geared to just like putting sparkles on your face and stuff and videoing your face. I didn't care about those. There's this one app called Kara Fun. You can be like a karaoke DJ. You can change the pitch. You can change the tempo. You can line up the, the tracks for the playlist. And then I've got like real, real speakers, a real microphone for when I was doing shows like live psychological illusion and hypnosis and magic shows and things over the years. I, I set it up in my living room. I have... A, like a disco ball with the disco lights going around and then i've got this app on my on my ipad here the the, the carafun app and I, i'm pulling these up on the on the big screen and it's awesome we're up like way too late late every night singing karaoke so that is how i've been i i to my mind i'm like i'm in my office i'm working i'm working except when i'm not i'm doing karaoke so thanks for the question. Maybe one of these times I'll sing a little karaoke on here or we'll record one of the kids doing it or something. Uh, so let's see. Let's finalize and see what you guys are saying here and wrap things up with the trailer for Kazuna, if I can bring it up. Uh, oh, my audition experience for Tai and Tetsuo. Well, briefly, I feel like I've covered that before, but it was just like any other audition. I remember... The building was on Van Nuys Boulevard in the Valley in Los Angeles on the second floor. I walked in. I saw that I knew the director, which was Michael Sorich. So there was a friendly face there. He had directed me for Saban previously. Prior to this, a lot of these guys knew me from Saban because I was the voice of Alpha 5 after Michael Horowitz originated it you know the robot on the original mighty morphin power rangers i went ay 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 you know, ay ay the ay 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 guy so some of them knew me from from that and a couple of other series that i had voiced for saban and then of course if the if the link isn't clear Hayam saban he he was he owned fox kids at that point and the property of digimon came from that world so it started as power rangers stuff and then moved over to to Fox and became Fox Kids and the big property was Digimon. So they already knew me. I knew a lot of those people. That helps, right? Right. What I said in the trailer, I don't know if you were able to hear the, the little video that I popped in here from the voiceover class where it says it's important to both know your craft and but also know people that can connect you. So that was that. So I'd, I'd already been in, I'd been in Los Angeles for seven years at that point doing magic shows to make ends meet uh, in the evenings and the weekends at, in the, at the Magic Castle in the Hollywood Hills and around town. And also, just vo I'd voice like a commercial. My first commercial ever was, Mom, Dad, can we go to Disneyland? It's the Magic Kingdom for, for Disney. And, and then I would do bit parts on, I was on Hey Arnold and just a bunch of little shows here and there. Totally spies, I think, stuff like that. And, and Nickelodeon and, and then Saban. And then, so anyway, long, long story longer, I knew people in the room. They had worked with me before. I saw the picture of Ty. And the final piece of this puzzle is I had been reading the very first Harry Potter book, which had come out. And I had been reading it out loud to nobody, to myself in my home, doing all the voices. And when I saw, which I recommend, in my voice training course and in this voiceover class, I'm going to recommend that you read books out loud. Get used to your own voice, hearing it vocalize things from the printed page, printed words out loud. It's so important. So 
Anywho, I'd read hundreds of pages of this and I saw Ty and I, I put my body in the stance. It was that kind of fighting Ty stance, you know, at the, come on, let's digivolve, let's save the world kind of a fight. And I thought, this is like Harry Potter when he's, when he's saying Asio something, you know, with his wand and making a Dementor go away or whatever. This is the same pose and the kids are the same age. He, he, Ty is like Harry Potter, except American instead of, so I, I dropped the English accent that I was doing for Harry Potter at the time. You know, excuse me, Professor McGonagall, and I just made it, and I just made it into Ty, and it, boom, it just clicked like that. I didn't, I didn't, I had a backstory, which gave it sort of depth. I knew people that they'd worked with me, which gave them trust in what I was doing, and I knew my own voice. And so that was it. I feel like I should end on this. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, mm -mm, yeah, 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 skipping forward, skipping forward. But thank you for that question. That was a great question to you guys for your questions. All right, we're gonna we're gonna wind down now with the trailer. Uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. I will I will I will call out this one. Have there been any trailers I wanted to voice but never got to? <laughs> uh, I love the Curious George animated show. It's so cute. My kids and I watched it when they were young. And Laura Jill Miller, who played the voice of Kari in the original Digimon and Digimon the movie, she was in Curious George. She played this kid. And there were, I don't know who played the boy, the little boy character that was with her, but yeah, I wish I could have played that. And we could have reprised our our energetic connection, if you will, that we had in Digimon, because we really did play off each other very well. Our voices kind of go together well. So I do wish I'd been able to play that and to play Curious George, although Frank Welker is just the best at animal sounds. <laughs> That's pretty much how Curious George sounds. I would just do, <laughs> and then they could lay that track down for every Curious George episode. <laughs> Uh, you only knew I did Digimon. Check me out on, on IMDb or Wikipedia or something. Uh, I don't know how they know this stuff, but IMDb has almost 100 animated TV shows, movies, and video games that I've voiced over the years. People know me from as Hige in Wolf's Reign, as, as Tetsuo in Akira, uh, as Elk in Ark the Lad, on and on and on. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> I've got to finish this. He zoned out Teacher Ty and Teacher Joshua. Is there going to be a quiz? There's no quiz, but you can watch it on YouTube later. Please like and subscribe, you guys. Please like and subscribe. And if you want funny stuff, follow me on Twitter because that's where the funny happens. All the links are in the description below. The best, the best advice for someone brand new to voice acting world is I have a PDF called The Seven Keys to Voice Acting Success. It's free. I wrote, I wrote a whole little booklet, a whole little pamphlet on my advice for someone brand new to the voice acting world. So just download that. It's free. Uh, I should mention all that. I just have so many resources and they're all, in the, they're all in the description. Just look at the description below and you can get that. So yeah, uh, definitely grab that. And it's free. Uh, oh, Amanda already saw the dub trailer and liked how I sounded. Thank you. I can't wait to see the movie too. I have not seen the whole movie. I've just seen bits and pieces. I never watched the original subs because I don't want it to influence my acting in the dubs, if that makes sense. I want to go my own way. I'm just going to go down a bit here. Um Something about allergies. What? What's that? Allergies. How do I get my throat and nostrils clear for recording? Oh my gosh, that's great. Uh, great question. I mean, not great that you have allergies, but a great question. I actually have a whole day in my 30-day voice training course devoted, a whole class devoted to that, to not losing your voice or getting hoarse, and another one devoted to diet and how diet can affect. So some of this is diet related. Stop having dairy is one thing. And for the allergies, drink a lot of water. Now, neither of these things are going to help with your allergies, of course, but drinking a lot of water, hydrating is the best thing you can do for your vocal cords. So I'm doing it right now. Forget about tea. People drink tea, like a tea with lemon. That's horrible. Tea will dry you out, dry and make it worse. And a humidifier, cough drops, these things tend just not to work over the course of a two hour or a four hour voiceover session anyway. Hydrate cut out dairy. 
those are my quick answers uh, to that question, Sam. Uh, mm -mm -mm. People liking the trailer. I don't know. I, <laughs> uh, mm -mm -mm. I'm just going to go down here to the bottom if I can, if I may. My apologies to everybody. I'm skipping over. It's just a time thing. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Ah, somebody owns my book. Yes, again, my book is called Finding Focus in a Changing World. I spent three months <laughs> writing it. You can get it for a buck on Kindle or like, I don't know, $12 and have me read it to you on iTunes or, or on Audible if you want, for like four hours. And you, you you had the Audible or the iTunes version. Yeah, I'll read it to you. It will, it will change your life. It will help you to become a higher performing individual, whether it's as a real, like a, an actual performer, like a voiceover actor, or just in any aspect of your life. Okay. Mm, okay, now we're, now we're catching up. You can't, you can't beat karaoke. That's right. Uh, I want I want to open one of these with a karaoke. Maybe I'll do that next week. <laughs> okay. And, oh, and just as I said that, Drac Aqua said he went. Okay, fine, fine. You don't have to ask me twice, Drac. I think I'll sing on the next stream next week. What's my go-to karaoke song? Ah, uh, you gotta tune in next week to hear one of those. I have a short list, certainly. I don't know. I have a top five, probably. Um, yeah, yeah. M Misha knows me well. <laughs> The karaoke is coming to the Joshua Seth Show live stream. Well, you're clapping now. You're plotting now. You want it now, but you haven't heard me sing yet. I'm, <laughs> I'm a speaker more than I am a singer, but I put heart into it. I put heart and soul into it. I, I do enjoy it. Okay, so people loving the Harry Potter books, all the nostalgias. That's right. That's the one. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. That's the backstory, in my mind, behind my characterization of Ty. It's the young Harry Potter. Okay. So, Mojo with the love, Allie with the love. Okay, so now. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> guys, you guys are awesome. Um, and thank you so much for tuning in. I know these aren't every week, but every week that I am able to, I will be right here for you. The TV, people are asking me about the TV. Nobody has reached out to me about the TV show. So I don't know if I'm doing it or or not. Uh, oh, I didn't, so Maxwell's asking, how was my talk with Tom Fawn about the 20 years of Digimon? I didn't talk with him. We did the, that separately. Social distancing was already in place when we recorded those out in Los Angeles. So I did that in the studio where I was recording Digimon Kazuna, they brought a film crew in and filmed me answering their questions and talking about Digimon through the years right there in the recording studio. So I'm interested to see what comes out of that as well. That was uh, on the day that they locked LA down back in March, I think, that I was out there. We put all this together this year. Now, let me see. Give me a second here. I'm going to see if I can find... We put all this, all this together. together. No, wait a second. Uh, now, now, Kizuna a trailer. Uh, okay. I know that was confusing for a second there. Um, I'm going to drag that down for a second. English IGN. I think, I think this Later. is it. Okay. Wait a second. Wait a second. We're going to make it happen. All right. So let me go back to the screen share. Oh, and by the way, by the way, how are, uh, wait, mm, mm, where, where was it? Oh, here it is. There. Okay. There's the screen share. I'm going to, I'm going to close with the trailer and some comments on the trailer. Let's see if we can do tall on this one. All right. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Getting fancy with the live stream. All right. So here's me watching the trailer with you, I hope you can hear it. Shabang! Too bad things can't stay the same forever. Friends sometimes screw apart. Do you know why Digimon partners pick the children they work with? The possibilities are endless. The power of your Digimon steadily turns. Bond between Digimon and partner is broken forever. 
Does this mean we all have to say goodbye to our Digimon? A Digimon that robs Digi destined of their consciousness. No, don't! Forcing your partner to Digivolve accelerates your separation. And that will only speed up their goodbyes! Let's get this show on the road! Save them all! change our fate but who cares we all live with the choices we make this is going to be our final digivolution digimon adventure last evolution kizuna you know tai you sure have gotten big wow ah oh, that was awesome i hope you guys enjoyed that stabbing you with the hearts <laughs> I know. Epic, right? <laughs> I, I can't wait either. Guys, that's going to be it for me this week. <laughs> it's coming soon. It's not long. It's not, not too long now until this movie comes out. What a buildup, man, to get to this point. 20 years, 20 years in the making. So, until next time. Next week, next Friday night, same bad time and the same bad channel. I'll see you here and we'll do, I think we will, we'll do some karaoke. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye. Digivolve!